HT Zero stands alone as the only digital FPV provider of low latency, high quality digital FPV. How we got here is quite a story. This is the history of HD Zero. HD Zero began life as the brainchild of Carl Zhu. Carl had a vision to offer pilots a low cost, low latency alternative to analog and the current only system at the time, DJI. DJI was loved by freestyle pilots for the quality and the penetration, but hated by racers for the higher latency offered versus traditional analog. Carl saw that there was an opening in this market. If he could design, engineer and manufacture a low cost alternative to DJI, something that was similar to the cost of analog, but offering digital and sell it to the manufacturers to provide the customer with an open source system similar to Express LRS, whereby it's cheap, it's cost effective, the community have control over the direction that it goes in, and the manufacturers such as Beta FPV, Happy Model, Matek, Naminno, and all the rest of them could then manufacture these VTXs for a low cost, giving the public the real opportunity at low cost digital FPV. Carl set to work in 2019 to produce this system. He went through many iterations and finally settled on something called Bite Frost. This is where Carl began to struggle getting the manufacturers on board. See, ultimately, not many of them actually believed the system that Carl was offering was A, feasible, and B, the public actually wanted it. Many manufacturers underestimated the thirst for racers and the desire for low latency when it came to digital FPV. Carl toiled and struggled with his team to get manufacturers to buy the ASIC chip to produce for themselves. And in around 2020, Carl and his team decided the only way to prove to manufacturers that this worked was to do it themselves. Looking for partners who could scale the operation, Carl partnered with Fat Shark. This gave us the very first iteration that we saw of Bite Frost. It was very primitive at the time. It wasn't, in all honesty, very good, but people that did fly it could see that there was a real, there was something here, there was a real potential here to take this forward. But what it needed was investment, bigger partners, and a real driving force behind it. Carl and Fat Shark worked together to try and do what they could to sharpen the tool, to bring it to market in a more mature state. And then they launched Sharkbite. Sharkbite was initially designed as a module system that could be connected to existing FPV analog goggles. Any goggle that had HDMI in could then be converted to digital, meaning that the pilots wouldn't have to buy a whole new set of goggles. Because at the time, the Fat Shark analog goggles were seen as the industry gold standard, and people didn't want to move away from them. The release of the Shark Bite system was met with excitement, but some skepticism. This was down to the fact that the VTXs offered were only 200 milliwatt versus potentially 1,200 milliwatt for the DJI Vista. The quality of the picture was a lower quality than the Cadex Vista, the DJI system. Penetration was worse, the long distance was worse. To most freestyle pilots, it was a system that didn't really make any sense, but racers absolutely loved it. In around about 2021, Carl and Fat Shark parted companies. They'd brought the system to market, but still, manufacturers weren't interested in buying the custom ASIC from Carl to produce for themselves. Carl realized at this time he needed to do something drastic to really drive this system into people's hands. And this is where HD Zero was born. Having initially realized that he would have to do it himself, Carl then doubled down on this, setting up HD Zero and becoming the driving force behind the innovation. See, Carl would be seen on Facebook groups, RC forums, and everywhere that you looked, asking pilots, 
What's your priority? What can HD0 do for you? How do you want us to design the system? And pilots came in and said, we want more power. So a 400 milliwatt board was born. Carl kept asking these questions. And then Freestyle Pilots came along and said, we'd like to use it for Freestyle, but these boards are too exposed, they're too large. They don't offer any protection for us Freestyle Pilots. And quite frankly, they're not powerful enough to penetrate bandos. So Carl then invented and released the Freestyle VTX, which is over a watt. Not content with this, however, Carl went one step further later on and announced that HD Zero intended to manufacture their own goggles. Having the tried and tested way of marketing, Carl then went back to Facebook groups, went back to RC forums and events and said to the pilots, I'm gonna make some goggles and I'm gonna make them for you. But if I'm making them for you, you need to tell me what your priorities are because I as an individual and we as a company can tell you what we're going to make, but it's you that's going to fly them. And ultimately it's you that's going to buy them. This led to several revisions of the HD Zero goggles until we got what we have today. Quality was always at the forefront, being some of the first goggles offering 1080p OLEDs. The case went through several revisions too, always being put back to the community to ask have we got it right this time? Before finally being released. Not content with that, Carl also said, here's the plans, here's the files. Make it yourself. Adjust it, change it, do whatever you want. This is open source. See, Carl's got a history in open source video technology. He's got a dream of converting all analog CCTV to digital. For the work that Carl does, open source has been his savior. And even now, Carl still believes in having it as open source as possible. So if you was to buy a pair of HD Zero goggles today and you didn't like the case that was with them, the color, or indeed you wanted to redesign the sharp edges to something more smooth and sleek, that, available, that option is available to you and all you need is a 3D printer. Now I don't see people like DJI offering such a service, do you? And while we're on DJI, let's address the elephant in the room because there is an elephant in the room and let's look at what the future potentially holds for HD Zero. But first of all, we're gonna look at the comparison to DJI. Now, HD Zero was never on par with version one of DJI. The penetration, the range, and the quality of the visuals just couldn't match it. This is not me talking, by the way. This is not me giving my opinion. This is words direct from Carl in an interview that he held with Chris Russell last year, or a couple of years ago, sorry. And Carl spoke about how they can improve the system. Part of the problem, HD Zero don't produce their own cameras. They go to Runcam and they put a request into the Runcam. Runcam then provide them what they think they want and HD Zero try and make that work. What Carl essentially said was, if we could produce our own cameras, we could fix things like poor penetration. And he gave an example of dropping the frame rate from 60 frames per second to 30 frames per second on the fly, which would then double the bandwidth available to increase that penetration. That's something that I don't believe they've been able to do, but there are more and more releases coming out. And I believe we're at a point in history now where Carl is about to realize his ultimate dream. See, for freestyle pilots like me, HD Zero honestly doesn't make a huge amount of sense. I fly in places whereby I need range within VLOS. And penetration. I don't race. I'm not a racer. I don't find racing um, not interesting. It's fun. I've done it. It's just not for me. So I could either pick up a pair of HD Zero goggles, which if you was to go to Hobby RC in the UK, would cost £590, which is nearly £700. American dollars. Or I could pick up a pair of DJI 3 goggles for less. The cost of the VTX for a freestyle pilot is the same as an O3 now, but the O3 offers stability, 4K, 120 frames per second, and from a freestyle pilot's point of view, it is a better and more cost-effective system than HD Zero. However, that doesn't take away the fact that HD Zero is incredibly fun to fly. See, for this video, I hadn't flown HD Zero in quite a while, so I updated everything using the new HD Zero programming tool because in the past again we had fragmentation there whereby we had different VTXs, we had different cables, we had the most convoluted way of updating firmware I've ever seen whereby you had to connect your goggles or your module to your VTX using a really short cable 
copy over files to your goggles or VTX, power on your quad, and then it would sort of update from the goggles onto the quad. And you had to wait and it, it was it was a mess. It wasn't good. But the firmware flashing tool that they released for the VTXs is really simple. So you just plug it in, you select which VTX you've got, you press flash and you're done. And it's done in seconds because HD0 never intended to be a system or service provider or manufacturer. The goal was always to provide the chip to the manufacturers for them to do it themselves. Carl took action and made it himself to prove to these manufacturers that what he was offering did actually work. But that brought its own challenges. HD Zero was never a big company. It was never a company designed or aimed at scaling production on a size needed. Carl admits he made mistake after mistake after mistake. He admits the first 200 VTXs produced didn't work. But four years later, we were at a stage where HD Zero has an incredibly strong following and an incredibly passionate following. I flew it back to back with analog the other day for this video. One, to get footage, and two, to remember what the system was like. And it's better than I remembered. There's been lots of updates to it since I last flew it, and it flies a lot better. It was never a bad system, it just wasn't fit for my needs. However, I've been enjoying flying analog recently. So the switch then back to HD zero shows me the gulf between analog and HD zero is quite large. The problem we've got is it's not large enough to justify the massive price differences between analog and HD zero for your average freestyle pilot. And this is where the future for HD zero comes in. But before we do that, couple of points I want to raise. Number one, we've got a members option. Jedi FPV and Barry Morgan FPV are our current members. Go join them on the bench for $1.99 a month. You get a shout out in every video. You also get occasional, and I remember, exclusive behind the scenes photos and anything else that's going on that I can't release to the public is released privately to members. And also, can I ask, this is going to be a series of videos whereby we delve into the history of all things FPV. This is episode one. There's going to be lots more over the winter. Can I ask that you drop a comment? Let me know whether you're an analog flyer, a HD zero flyer, do you fly DJI and HD zero? What would make you buy more HD zero? What do you think the problems are? And just get involved in the debate down below so that we can potentially even make a follow up to this video. And do like, comment, share and subscribe, obviously. Now back to the video. So the future of HD zero is really, really bright. The goal was always, as I've mentioned numerous times in this video, to provide the custom chips to the manufacturers for them to provide the boards and have an open source system. That is still the goal of HD Zero. The reason why the goggles are so expensive is essentially we buy in a prototype. We buy in a system that never intended to exist, but exist it does and hold its own it does. And not only hold its own, but for racing, nothing comes anywhere near it. We've had four years of development whereby DJI, CADEX, and Analog could all catch up to HD Zero in the, in the racing sphere. They haven't done. They haven't even got close. Nobody on the market offers a product to racers like HD Zero. It stands alone. And that's a testament to the work that Carl and the team have done. Now, recently, HD Zero released a all-in-one board, which includes the flight controller, the ESC, and the HD Zero VTX. And sure, this is only a, a tiny whoop board at the moment, but that's how HD Zero started. They started offering racing low latency and provided the first 1S digital tiny whoops. They've partnered with Happy Model, a manufacturer that they'd initially aimed to get on board with the custom ASICs. Now, at this moment in time, my understanding, and I have reached out for comment from HD Zero, so if I do get it, I'll add it to the screen now. But my understanding is that this isn't a case of HD Zero licensing the chip to Happy Model. This is HD Zero going to Happy Model saying, look, we want to make more things, but we don't have the capacity ourselves. You guys provide all in one boards for whoops. Can we integrate this system into it? And that's what they've done. It's not perfect. It only offers SPI ELRS. That in itself is a problem, but a design choice made by Happy Model, I believe. But we have a system that's all on one board. That's Carl's dream. We're here. It's 2024. Carl's dream is out there. 
it's just not quite out there to the masses and it's not quite out there how we'd hoped. Will 2025 see manufacturers such as Beta FPV, Matek, Namino and the rest take up the challenge of producing cost-effective HD0 boards? Carl said that once that starts to happen, the whole firmware system will be made open source. And you can bet your bottom dollar that when that happens, just like with the LRS, HD0 will go from strength to strength.